If you like puzzles, you might like mapping a piece. It's amazing how much you can learn about the structure of a piece before you even start practicing it. And what you learn will help you to practice it more effectively and to learn the piece sooner and more correctly. Let's see what we can find out about a piece of music without even touching the piano. I can see just by looking at this piece that there are two or three contrasting sections. Two things pop out at me. First, there are a couple of strings of eighth notes with lots of accidentals. And second, what looks like a lot of repetitions of a staccato quarter note pattern in the left hand. But I want to map out the whole piece, so I'm going to the beginning. So what I see there is a couple of half notes and a whole note. Can I find this later in the piece? Yeah, here it is. Measure 10, and I see it again at the beginning of the bottom line. Now, I'm going back to the beginning. I wonder if measure 3 and 4 are repeated anywhere else. And sure enough, there they are, tagging along after those first two measures. In fact, I notice now that measure 3 and 4 use the exact same notes as measure 1 and 2. Wow. G, D, C. G, D, G, D, C, D, C. At this point, I can't help noticing that the bottom line of this piece looks a lot like the top line. So I go through measure by measure. I put one finger on the bottom, one finger on the top. I go one measure, the next measure, the next measure, the next measure. And what I discover is they are exactly the same, except the bottom line is an octave lower and it has a slightly different ending. My next quest is to look at measure five and measure six and measure seven. They look kind of different from the first part. Do I find them again in the piece? Mm, they're not on the second line, they're not on the third line, but of course there they are on the last line. So that means that I have to remember the second time I play this little A section, I'm not going to follow it with the double thirds. After that, I must address the issue of the eighth notes. Looking at that fairly carefully, B, B flat A, A flat G, and so on, I determine, yeah, good. These are chromatic scales. But I notice in measure eight, there's a change of direction. So I want to make sure that I mark a down arrow and an up arrow because this goes down to G but then rises up again to D sharp. In the left hand, whoa, the notes are not the same. Oh, this will be challenging to practice. All right, so in the left hand it starts on F, goes down to D flat, and rises up to A. At least they're going in parallel motion. Looking down to the next line, which begins the same way, I notice that the direction is all going down. So this is coming close to the first instance, but with a different ending. By the way, look at the clef signs in measure eight and measure 14. It's a common issue with young students to confuse notes when the clefs have changed. They may not notice. So it's good to point out to understand that measure 14F is exactly the same as measure 8F, even though it looks so different. So now, actually, I have managed to look at this whole piece and to get a really good idea of what it's going to be like. When I go to practice it, it'll be much easier to put it together, and maybe I'll have a good idea of practicing each of these sections separately. That way, I can put it together more easily at the end. Here's how it sounds.
that's a perfect musical picture of penguins, I think. I can just see them waddling around. And now, with having mapped this out, it's much easier for me to practice and learn it. So do try it on the next piece that you plan to master. Map it out before you practice it. I'm Nancy O'Neill Breath, and these are effective practice tips. Try them.